Chapter 2 Well, isn't that just an unpleasant lie? Piranha fidgeted with her phone for a second, turning the corner of another street, hoping the walk might be a good distraction and clear her head. She'd been playing this odd family trip to Splatsville thing with her brother, and her sister, and Molly. Of course, Phoenix had said she didn't exactly have the room for so many guests, unless someone wanted to sleep on the couch. Piranha wasn't much for that, given the intense pain her muscles would give her if she so much as dared to do so. For that reason, Piranha had taken Molly up on her offer to stay at some friends she had in Splatsville. Piranha had spent many nights staying as a guest at other people's houses, Sometimes people she didn't even know well. Friends of friends. It would be no different to stay at a house of a friend of Molly's. Just another trip with a friend that involved staying at a friend of that friend's house. Except this time, it just so happened that she had the biggest, stupidest crush on said friend that she was going on a trip with. Which made her very anxious about this particular trip. That feeling was not made any better when Molly revealed that their friend had an ice cream maker, which she'd gone on about shaking in excitement, or when she had to stand up from where she was sitting to hop slightly as she explained that there was also a nice boutique close to it that they could go check out, or when she shook Prana's arm lightly when she talked about taking her to her favorite coffee shop. If Molly had gotten any more excited about any of those things, Prana might have had all three of her hearts seized and died right then and there. Luckily, Molly ended up getting distracted with something else, so the topic changed and she calmed down a bit. She had been spared then. She didn't know what she'd do when it was just the two of them walking in Splatsville together, like Molly already said she'd wanted to do. She had definitely not spent several nights thinking about it since it was brought up, something she absolutely wasn't thinking about a few moments prior, a thought that certainly wasn't getting to the best part when it was interrupted by someone shouting her name. Prana? The voice sounded completely unfamiliar, and it sounded surprised. Prana knew several people, in the hundreds by now, through her job or going to parties on occasion, or just meeting them through friends. When someone called her name out like this, it always made a voice in the back of her head ask why it was so shocking to see her out on the street. Then shortly after that, there was a small mental wish that it wasn't an ex. Is that you? The voice asked again when she didn't turn around. Oh, gee, who the hell else would it be? Your mom? Piranha growled as she turned around to be faced with an octoling that looked way too familiar to be a stranger, yet not familiar enough to be a friend. Oh my god, it is. The octoling's eyes got even wider. I thought... I thought you were dead. Hooray! You're not seeing dead people. Prana waved her hands out to her sides. Do I know you? The octoling seemed a little hurt, drawing her hands in and wincing, almost. You don't remember? I was a good friend of Moray's, if you recall. She spoke gingerly. Prana glared at the mention of her sister. Then it clicked slightly. Holy shit, Maymay? Prana put her hands together. Maymay suddenly frowned at the name, groaning slightly, though nodding her head. Mako, but yes, that is the nickname she'd given me. I mean, great to see you made it out of the domes, but uh, why did you think I was dead? Prana wrinkled her nose. That didn't make a whole lot of sense to her. Not like she'd done anything dangerous recently. God, does something happen? Do you not remember? Mei Mei seemed to shiver at the thought, looking worried. Remember what? Don't pull some the accident bullshit on me. I cannot, will not, take it. Prana felt her lip curl to reveal one of her fangs. No, but... When you were about 14, you disappeared and I thought you were... Her voice fell off to a murmur, 
then picked up again. Rumor had it you were dead. Psh, why would I be dead? Prana laughed slightly. Don't think I could handle myself if I chose to go off and simply do my own thing. Because your brother disappeared with you. Mei Mei's voice sounded grim. I don't get how that changes literally anything. Prana rolled her eyes. There was always a random mention of her brother. Either from people who knew him or people who wanted to know him. Sometimes she wished she didn't hear so much about him constantly. He's a murderer, Prana. Mei Mei hissed the words. That was a new one. She couldn't help but cough at hearing the words leave Mei Mei's mouth. He's a what now? You don't have to keep lying for him, Prana. It's okay. Mei Mei sounded almost sympathetic for her. Pardon? Prana's throat suddenly felt uncomfortably dry. Where do you get the idea that he's a... She choked on the word, lowering her voice. A murderer. Yeah, it's hard to deny, Prana. Mei Mei glanced over her shoulder, before taking a small step toward Prana. He goes on a mission with Moray, and he mysteriously comes back without her. Suddenly, she's dead, and her body isn't recovered. Prana was just now realizing just how much the military had never disclosed about that situation. Just how much Gar had never said about it to anyone before he left. Just how badly that must have looked and sounded when the death and the mission got out amongst soldiers. Fabulous. She began to hate rumors more than she already hated them before. And all those scars, the slice on his shoulder, the missing eye, who do you think would have been skilled enough to leave such deep cuts on his face? You know facial wounds heal very well, Prana. She was speaking lowly. And what happened to you? You have slice marks on your face, and one on your tentacle. Did he try to kill you? Did he lure you away to do it? Piranha was speechless. To assume such things of her brother felt absolutely absurd, to the wildest degree. She'd seen him get horribly ill because he'd so much as thought about hurting people. Those happened a few months before he left, actually. Accident with those steel claw caps they used to give us. She touched the scar on her cheek for a moment. And as for the tentacle scar... Uh, that's just another embarrassing accident. Okay, so there's that, but then you must have managed to escape him unscathed? Mei Mei's eyes widened. Oh my god, he never tried to kill me, Mei Mei. Good god. She shook her head. Then why don't I believe you? You're clearly alive. Escaped him, somehow. You don't have to lie for him. Nothing bad will happen to you, I promise. Mime tried to say. Okay, so, let me get this straight. I, as a 29-year-old woman, am telling you my brother did not, in fact, try to kill me. And you're going to take the word of a bunch of teenagers spreading rumors from 15 years ago? Prana slammed her hands into her face. You know, I thought high school rumors were pretty bad, but... Good fucking cod. I don't see why else he would have disappeared with you after what happened with Moray. She looked entirely skeptical. Because he, oh, I don't know, didn't like the way the military handled death and didn't want me to end up like Moray? She held out her hands in the air, curling them like she was going to grab and shake Mei Mei, but didn't move forward to do so. Mei Mei was giving her another odd look. And maybe... Just maybe, the whole child soldiers thing was incredibly fucked up, and he wanted out? Prana shook her head. For the record, my brother would never hurt a fly. Literally. If he did, he'd cry about it for days. He once cried about having to kill a wasp in his apartment. A wasp. Mei Mei opened her mouth to say something else. And I know how it might have looked... 
But trust me, if he heard you say you thought he killed Moray, he'd throw up. Like, on the spot. Immediately, no joke. Prana put her hands down to her sides. Well, what else could have... The dome they were sent to was supposed to collapse within a week. It collapsed early. She got crushed under tons of concrete. Awesome. Great. Cool. Are we understood now? She spoke quickly. He'd bawl his eyes out. He blamed himself for that for years. Her voice was becoming a growl. He couldn't stop a dome from crumbling, okay? That's not on him. And he only tried to get me away from there so I wouldn't end up in the same position. She found it hard to stop talking now. I mean, we lost our entire fucking family to the domes. All he wanted to do was stop us from being the next in series to uphold the dying early family reputation. She growled. Hell, if you don't believe me, we can go see him. I promise you, one word, no. One glance at him, and you know what I mean. He's harmless. She felt slightly sick talking about it, if only because she could remember hating him for exactly what she was defending him for right now plus all the years she spent trying to get him to return the favor. To think that, at one point in her life, she might not have cared so much about this assumption, or wouldn't have corrected someone for believing that rumor made her feel... Alright, you know what? We'll do it then, Mei Mei said. Excuse me, Prana coughed. You said we could see him. Go ahead then, lead the way. Mei Mei spoke with little hesitation. Let me, let me just collect my thoughts here. I just met you again after 15 years, and you immediately accused my brother of killing my sister and attempting to do the same to me, and now I'm going to lead you to him. She paused. Holy fuck, what am I doing? You want to prove to me those rumors aren't true? Go ahead. She growled. Technically, you don't even know if what he said about Moray was true. Maybe he didn't try to kill you, but... The files. You know what? Shut the fuck up! Prana immediately reached forward and grabbed Mamie's wrist, tugging her along. No more he killed her talk. We're gonna go see him. Was this a terrible decision? Yes. Was she going to regret this within a few minutes? No doubt. Should she have ditched Mei where she stood and left it at, my brother didn't kill my sister? Absolutely. This whole situation felt wrong. Having someone she hardly knew immediately walk up to her, surprised she's alive, no catching up or anything, immediately hitting her with the fucking murder conspiracy. Now she was leading said murder conspiracy theorist straight to her brother. Man, she could only hope this wouldn't end up incredibly messed up. She'd made a lot of mistakes, especially with Gar. She really didn't want to be making another one. At the same time, Mei had been one of Mori's friends. Not that Prana knew much about their relationship beyond that. Prana didn't want to have Mei keep thinking he could, for any reason, have been the one to take Mori's life. She was absolutely sure that even one glance at him would change her mind. If one glance didn't work, then a brief conversation, excluding talks about Moray, could probably be proof enough that he wasn't some cold-blooded killer. She just had to figure out how she was going to do this. He wasn't at work. It was a weekend. Given who he is, he'd likely be at his apartment, doing whatever he does during the day there, either probably reading, watching TV with the kids, or spectating as the two played a game. There was also a good chance he was doing none of the above, and might be at the lobby, doing turf war with his kids, or even his partners. Though she had her doubts, he usually planned a day ahead if he was going to do anything like that for whatever reason. Last she'd spoken to him, he'd had no real plans to go anywhere today, not even for errands, which she was sure he'd already run for the week. Considering his apartment was the most likely place for him to be, she had to figure out how she was going to do this. It would be insanely weird, to walk into his apartment with a stranger, and introducing him to Mei Mei all of a sudden would probably end up awkward, especially if he recognized her. 
That would end poorly. She kept trying to think up ideas as they got closer to the apartment building. She didn't want to lie about who Mei Mei was, and she didn't want this apparent rumor to be something Gar would learn about at all. Ever. Knowing him, all of his hearts might have attacks if she were to tell him that there was a rumor back in the domes that he killed Moray. Her thoughts felt like they were running in circles about it at this point. Her thoughts, along with her pace, came to an abrupt stop as they got close enough to see the apartment building, but not quite close enough to be seen. She blinked once, letting go of Meimei's wrist as she realized this might be the worst timing she'd ever experienced. Oh, awesome! Your brother, who is totally innocent, not a murderer, is chasing a young inkling girl. This is so reassuring. Meimei's voice was wavering before she moved from Piranha's side, tensing to run toward him. Prana immediately put her hand on Meimei's shoulder and gripped down, not letting her move forward. Wait. Wait for what? For him to... Shut up. Prana gestured for her to be silent, pointing forward. Gar was chasing after someone, yes. Whimsy, who was giggling, throwing glances over her shoulder as he got closer to her. It looked like they'd come from the park, head toward the apartment to go back home. After a few moments, Gar caught up to her, swinging her into his arms and spinning her around while she let out a scream, though it was one of her more playful ones. As he stopped spinning, the stupid wide grin on his face became a bit more visible. That particular smile, as goofy as it looked, was reserved only for the people he cared about. Pran knew that. He used to give her those smiles a lot when they were younger, and attempts to make it seem like things were okay when it wasn't going well. Or when he would play games with her, sort of like the one he was playing with Whimsy now, whatever it was. She shook her head lightly as he started talking, though she almost had to strain to hear him. He always was almost unreasonably quiet. I thought you said you'd be the last one standing in a zombie apocalypse? And here you are. Gar shook his head at her, while Whimsy kept laughing. How are you supposed to outrun them if you can't outrun me? Because you're my dad. She wiggled slightly as he kept holding her. What if your dad was a zombie? Gar smiled. No. Whimsy flailed slightly. Rah! He did some kind of growl, setting her down so she could run away again. She spun around to face him instead. If I can't run away from you, I will attack you instead, she claimed boldly. Gar just growled again instead of saying anything, while Whimsy made a pose, holding her fingers up like a gun, acting as if she was going to shoot him. No, wait, never mind! Gar held his hands up, as if he was being sincerely threatened. Real zombies wouldn't beg. She furrowed her eyebrows at him. You're right. I'm the best at being the worst zombie ever. Gar sounded ashamed. Aw, there, there. You can be the zombie we keep as a pet in some nice wire fencing. She patted his arm sympathetically. We? Me and Aunt Phoenix, Whimsy said casually. What? Did you think Hope would survive? He'd be the first one to go. What about Piranha? Gar narrowed his eyes slightly. She'd be the one who goes off to live alone or something in a shack in the woods. Whimsy said confidently. If Piranha had the ability to say anything, she'd argue that that was absolutely untrue. She wasn't exactly the loner type. Of course, if she tried to add any input, it would make it profoundly obvious that she and Maymay had been watching the two for a while. Something about that sounds... not right. I think you got something mixed up there. But also, did you say Hope wouldn't... Gar squinted. Oh, Dad. It wouldn't even be the zombies that would get him. He'd probably eat something he's not supposed to. Whimsy's tone was full of sorrow. Please, have more faith in your brother. Gar set a hand on her head. When he stops threatening to eat rocks at the park, I will. Whimsy turned her head up with a huff. What is going on? Maymay finally spoke, and Prana turned her attention away from Gar and Whimsy. I thought it'd be pretty clear by now, but 
Let me spell it out for you. Pranicide. That's Whimsy, Gar's daughter. And the other kid they're talking about is Hope, Gar's son. He has kids? Mimi looked confused. Everyone had about the same question when that happened. Yeah. Prana glanced back over at Whimsy, who was poking Gar and asking him a question she didn't take the time to process. Yeah. He has two kids. Yes. Who's the... Mimi squinted. They're inkling kids, so... They're adopted. Whoa! Wild concept. I know. Prana set her hand on her forehead. Huh. Mimi stared at Whimsy. God, it is just baffling to me how people thought he... Prana felt her lip curl in disgust. Well, I already told you half of it. Mimi turned to look at her. He goes out on a mission with his sister, comes back alone. He looks like he was beaten bloody. She was skilled. She could have easily left those marks. Not to mention, when he came back... His demeanor was entirely different. What do you think trauma like that does to someone? Prana almost felt like she was getting a headache. If you watched your sister die, would you be the same happy-go-lucky kid? Meme shot a brief look toward the ground, then back up. The same falls under what it's like for murderers, doesn't it? That would change someone. It was a mystery to everyone, really, beyond the higher-ups. He never talked about it. Of course he didn't. He didn't want to talk to me about it until I was 17. But he had documentation of the event, too. Something given to him shortly before we left, since he was the oldest in our family. And, technically, an adult by then. Prana took a deep breath. People put things together and made stories about it. That was just the one that made the most sense especially after you two both went missing at the same time, the same day. Mimi spoke with hesitance. Crazy. Well, congratulations. You finally have the answer. No one killed anyone. Prana splayed her hands out. Hooray. I'm Prana. What are you doing? The awfully familiar voice of Hope greeted her from behind, and she jumped back. Holy Hope? She said a little too loud, then glanced over at Gar and Whimsy. They didn't seem to hear, since Scar was still tipping his head to the side, listening to something Whimsy was saying. We could go back up and finish the puzzle we were working on, he suggested, to whatever it was Whimsy had said. Yes! I want to see what the seahorse part looks like when it's finished. Whimsy held her hands up in enthusiastic fists, before running off toward the inside of the complex. Gar smiled for a moment, watching her go before he followed her in. Where did you come from? Prana turned back to Hope. The lobby. I was getting some matches in with Stella, but, uh... Hope leaned to the side, looking at Mei Mei. Who's this weird lady you're hanging out with? Uh... Prana squinted. And, uh, why are you two watching my dad and sister? Hope glanced toward where Gar and Whimsy had been, then over at Prana with a suspicious look. So, your hope? Meme muttered. What? Hope tilted his head to one side. Prana waved her hand. Never mind her. Uh, we were just... I didn't think it was observation day. Hope blinked. His tone was so casual, Prana almost forgot to be confused. What? You know, the days where we watch my dad and keep tabs on him. Hope shrugged. That was... not a... Prana squinted at him. Oh, come on. You're part of the swarm. Don't pretend you don't know. Hope wrinkled his nose at her. Prana stared at him. It took a full minute for it to click that he was making things up intentionally to give her something to lie about. Or he was throwing her for a loop for no particular reason. He liked to do that too sometimes. Uh, sure... Prana nodded her head. Anyway, who's that? Hope pointed to Meimei. Or are we pretending like they're an invisible person who doesn't exist? No, we're not. Uh, pretending. Hope, Meimei? 
Mei Mei, Hope. Prana gestured her hands in the introduction. Hey there? Mei Mei gave an unsure smile. Hi. Who are you, and why are you hanging out with my aunt? Hope had a questioning expression that his uninterested tone didn't match. Oh, uh... Mei Mei looked over at Prana. Old friend, we're doing some... catching up. Prana smiled. If she mentioned the fact that Mei Mei was a good friend of Moray's, Hope would definitely have a handful of questions she wasn't sure would be good to ask. That, and he might tell Gar. Since Hope told him nearly everything. Even though Prana wasn't entirely sure Gar would remember Mei Mei, if he did, it might not be the best thing for him. It was probably better to pretend this whole thing never happened at all. Or at least, to never let Gar know about it. Oh, cool. Well, it's nice to meet you. Hope's demeanor shifted immediately, and he waved a hand to Mei Mei. Nice to meet you, too. Mei Mei was speaking slowly. Anyway, I'd love to chat with ya, Auntie and Mei Mei. But my sister made sugar cookies, I think. I have a gut feeling. Hope cast a glance toward the apartment. And therefore, I know my job. I must go unleash a sprinkle nightmare. Don't you dare destroy Whimsy's cookies. Prana put her hands on her hips, speaking with a stern tone. This is payback for all the time she's crushed my paper airplanes midair. Hope growled. I'll never forget you. F-15 Eagle, attempt 174. Hope lowered his head to the ground, looking upset. You do not need to get payback. Prana sighed. Yes, I do. You weren't there for the glittering, summer of ultimate destruction. Hope's tone was intense. Okay, I've heard of the Summer of Ultimate Destruction, but the glittering is news to me. Prana squinted. A man has never seen so much glitter on a plane before, and it was the worst day of my life, I think. Hope gave her a solemn expression. We lost a real asset that day. The plane? The plane. Seriously, though. Revenge is not everything. Prana closed her eyes. You must be humble. Be better. Don't stoop to that level. You sound like my dad the time I kicked someone at school. Hope had a deep frown. You kicked someone at school? Prana blinked. Remember the time I asked you what you would do if someone was being mean to you and was poking you repeatedly when you already told them to stop and they were doing it on purpose? Hope put his hands together. Wait. Prana froze. Anyway, bye auntie. I'll totally take your advice to my hearts. Hope did a small salute before he started booking it toward the apartment complex. Hope, when I said I'd fight them, I didn't mean... She watched him swing open the door and disappear inside. Literally. She stared at where he'd been, pressing her hands into each other like she was going to pray, holding them in front of her mouth. This couldn't have been a recent event by any means, but she didn't know he'd actually listened to her and taken her seriously. She now felt slightly relieved he'd never told Gar what she had said. He couldn't have, or else she would have gotten a stern talking to. She reminded herself that Hope didn't always understand sarcasm or jokes like that. She realized she would need to review the other things she told him now and go back over some of those with him just to be safe. Though he was old enough now to understand right and wrong. She hoped, anyway. Huh. Mei Mei's hum reminded Piranha that she was still, in fact, standing right beside her. That was... I am... Not a good influence. Okay. Prana turned back to Mei Mei. You should probably get going. It sure is getting late. It's maybe four in the afternoon. Mei Mei tried to argue. I'm going to be so honest with you. No sugar coat? I don't want you to stick around out here. Prana glanced to the side. I'm not trying to seem like a shitty person. But you... Did approach me kind of odd. None of this feels right to me. Mei Mei opened her mouth, but Prana continued. Not to mention, all you said about my brother was 
a loop to be thrown in. If he ever caught wind of that little rumor, I think it might destroy him. And he was just starting to seem better about it. Prana frowned. I get it. You must be torn about Moray, still. Or something. I don't know. I just know you were friends. May May made a weird face at the word friends, squinting her eyes and tilting her head to the side, as if that wasn't the right word. But, uh, you know the truth now, or whatever. I wouldn't lie. Not about that, anyway. Prana cleared her throat. I'm not, like, saying get lost forever, I never want to see your face again. But, like, maybe we could forget this happened, and reconnect sometime later. Where you don't smack me in the face with some conspiracy theory immediately? Prana laced her fingers together. Just putting it out there. A, how have you been, could be a good thing to consider. Meimei was still staring at Prana, looking lost. Her mouth slightly open like she wanted to say something, but couldn't. Hell, maybe next time you could even have a convo with him? Who knows? Today was unbelievable enough. Anything can happen. She drug out the word. I'm sorry. Meimei finally spoke. You're right. This was... She struggled on the word. Strange. You live here, right? In Inkopolis, yeah? Somewhere? She watched Meimei nod her head slowly. We'll run into each other some other time, I'm sure. Prana sighed as deeply as she could. It was awkwardly silent for a minute or two, which might have been the longest minutes of her life. She glanced up to where Gar's apartment was every now and then, as if to make sure no one was watching. Of course, no one was. Right, then, I'll see you again some- You'll see me for the first time sometime soon. Prana corrected her. We're trying to forget this ever happened, remember? Meimei paused, then nodded her head. Right. I'll see you sometime. She started to back away. Prana didn't stop her, but she did notice the zoned-out look in Meimei's eyes. Prana watched her walk away until she couldn't see her anymore. Then she let out the breath she hadn't entirely realized that she'd been holding. She was fully coming to terms with the series of bad reasoning and dumb decision-making on her part, and that it was the possibly the weirdest experience she had in a while. It almost didn't feel like it could be real. She also acknowledged she didn't entirely know if showing Gar playing around with whimsy and hope had changed her mind, or made her believe anything differently. Prana's rationality for that may have been... skewed. But the fact that Meimei didn't fully believe Prana when she'd said that Gar was innocent was still making her confused. Believing what was essentially a high school lie over her word, the type of story a teenager might make up to make things seem more messed up than they already were, it reminded Prana of the time students had done that in school she'd gone to, when she had learned to understand English enough to know what they were saying. The smallest thing would happen, and suddenly, there'd be a story about a student doing something horrific going around the building. Then it would turn out that someone just had an accident and got minorly injured. She shook her head. She was supposed to be forgetting about this, and this was quite literally just her dwelling on it. She should go back to her own apartment. Or maybe make sure Hope wasn't destroying Whimsy's sugar cookies. Or literally anything else other than staying on the sidewalk thing to herself.